Now, we must endure just as the Lamb, the Messiah, had to endure. It says the Lamb is the Messiah. Mount Zion, often another name for Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, is contrasted with this worldly empire. See, some of us, because we're so short-minded, when we hear Jerusalem, the only Jerusalem that we can ever picture is the one that sits over there. Where, Jeffrey? In um, Israel. In Israel. But this is not what God is talking about. He's talking about the new Jerusalem that will hold the 144,000 that represent believers who have endured persecution on earth and now are ready to enjoy the eternal benefits and blessings of life with God forever. Now, this speaks a lot. This sums basically it up. True believers, those that truly believe in God, not those that say we believe in him, those that declare that he is the Messiah, but those that's living and representing a new life in this world and showing their destiny is headed towards heaven, which is the new Jerusalem, the new kingdom of God that will be placed here on earth. See, that's something that we got to get an understanding of. See, when God gave John the vision and told him to measure the heavens measure the outside gates. Don't worry about the courtyard. That's because it's already built. It's already prepared, waiting to ascend here in the new Jerusalem where God is going to place it. It's already wet, waiting and ready. But we as sinners need to get our lives in order if we plan to be uh, grafted into God's family, living in the new Mount Zion. Uh, the 144,000 represent believers who have endured the persecution. Are you going to be part of that clan when God comes and calls us in? The three angels that we heard about contrast the destiny of believers with the unbelievers. Now those that believe got to understand that the Revelation and the rapture is going to take place mm -hmm. of God. They understand that, excuse me, the revelation is already taking place. They understand that it's going to come a time when God steps down and began, began to judge us all. But the problem with this is we understand, but for some reason we just won't live that way. Amen. Do we not understand that if you do not grasp your life in a different manner right now, that you will be left behind. Now, did you hear about what the 144,000 were like? These were innocent people. These were righteous people that continuously follow Jesus. Even now, they have humble hearts knowing that when he returned, he's going to call them first. Mm -hmm. It's a shame that even though we understand that it's going to come a time, that we still live like we Amen. have a, another day. Amen. Singing the song, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad, so glad about it. That's only speaking about the journey that you have already endured. It's not speaking about once you leave this world, the journey that you're going to endure. Because the only journey you're going to endure is going to be pain and suffering if you have not got your heart right with God. Mm. It's not a journey to make it to heaven it's a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It's not something that should be hard to do. But it's something that for some reason we insist on living a sinful life. Not understanding what the 144,000 went through. Because when we are single and when we're innocent, what do we look at it like? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm a still a virgin. Mm -hmm. That's just horrible. Not looking at the righteousness that God has for those that have been without blemish and without spot. It's too late for us to get in except for the baby that way. Mm -hmm. If we have been living any type of life of sin. Now we have to pray and ask God for forgiveness for the life that we have led. So that we can march in behind that 144,000. Mm -hmm. Those that he will use to teach us how to live a righteous life. 
they're spotless. God knows that's the lifestyle as a child that I wanted. I wanted to be spotless and without blemish. I said, I want to be a nun because I want to be close to God. But I allowed this world to call me a sinner for not being a sinner. And it became a blemish that became a stain. That became a spot that I thought I'd never remove. Mm -hmm. You got to learn to make change. It's telling us they heard a sound from heaven like a roar of rushing water mm -hmm. and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of a harpist playing their harp. And not these things we have today. This was a stringed instrument that they used to play behind the what was going on behind the songs and behind the word and the new song that they have in heaven. Mm -hmm. It was a stringed instrument, not this big old harp that they used today. It was a sweet sound. But it represents more than just a harp playing. It represents the rushing of the 44. Can you imagine when they step out of those graves and out of those pits that they have been placed in, the rushing the sound of the angels gathering, the sound of God's children coming, the sound of all the terror that's happening. See, it's going to be a great deal going on. But we still live our lives like it's just going to be another day. Hmm. It's time to change, church. Amen. Time to change. These people... These 144,000 are true believers who robes have been washed and made white in Christ's blood. We could be somewhat similar because God died, son died for who? Yes. Us. And we're supposed to be trying with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul to live a new life. Mm -hmm. Washing our robes in the blood of Jesus means you know all he's done and what he did for us. And you want to be clean because he has shed every drop of his love to show us that change will bring great things. But yet still, we don't want a robe washed in the blood of Jesus. We want our lives washed in our lives doing our own thing the way we want to do it without humility, without care, without humbleness. Hmm. And then you think that God accepts whatever we do if we don't live righteous? We must prepare our robes to be clean in the blood of Jesus. Hmm. Right. Don't make him have to change everything about you hmm. just because you love him. He know you love him. He know you believe him, but do we have to clean you completely up? Mm. Can you begin to wash your robe in his blood by cleaning up your own lives? Right. We got to watch our walks. We got to watch our talks, our movements. Mm -hmm. Where we go is so important. Because just because you're going and you're righteous don't mean you're going where it is right. Mm -hmm. People are shooting and killing. Yes, My daughter just went over her cousin's house, I think the week before last or last week. Left his house because he said, cousin, go ahead and go then. Go ahead and go. I'm doing better. I've been praying. Because he wasn't a praying. It was my cousin B's, uh, uh, my cousin Maxine grandson. You know mm -hmm. Maxine. He wasn't a praying man. None of them were praying. Daddy went to a funeral last year and said, Lord, I ain't going no more because these people don't believe in nothing. They just crazy over there. But it shows that you don't know everything, Brother Sullivan. Because that young man pulled himself out of the darkness and began to pray. Because he knew his life was condemned mm. by this world. In mm. time she left, maybe an hour, maybe less, he was murdered mm. in his home. We don't know, but yet he kept telling her, okay, cuz, you go ahead and go. Because he know he felt God coming. He felt those angels roaring in like a rushing water. That's the way your life leaves here. It rushes 
and before you know it, they're gone. Mm. Has nothing to do with it. It has something to do with it. Look at P. Daddy, P. Diddy, mother of his three children. Went to bed feeling a little bad. Next morning she was dead. Her life was rushed like a roaring water. They didn't expect that. They didn't see it coming. She just had a little flu, maybe a little pneumonia. They said she had been to Africa, so she could have picked up something. But you don't have to pick up when God is ready to bring you home. He'll rush you in and rush you out. That's why he says, be ye ready when at all times. Not after a while when you decide to straighten your life up or get your attitude together, but all times. Through his death, through Jesus, the lamb, the lion, he purchased us from our, from, from among, he purchased us from among men. This is chapter 7 and 14 where it states that info. Hmm. And in the Old Testament, idolatry was often portrayed as spiritual adultery. Mm-hmm. That's in the book of Hosea. You can take a look at that when you get a chance. But their purity is best understood symbolically, meaning that they are free from involvement with the pagan world system. Right. See, they thought they were Christian, but yet they wanted to go out and sleep around. But yet I'm a good one hmm. because I love the God. Hmm. But it's okay for me to fornicate, even though God said what? Thou shall not fornicate. Why? Not just because he want to be hard on you, because he know you got emotions, he know you got feelings, but because he know what can happen out of it. You can have a little one, and you may not be home to raise it. Mm. And then when you get back home, and they don't know you, and don't know how to respect you, then you done lost out on a lot of things. Mm. See, we lose out on good because we choose to be bad. But God has told us the way to him is through righteousness. God is my only father. My daddy raised me the best that he knew how through the guidance of my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. But he cannot save my soul the way Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. He cannot Pray me into heaven the way Jesus can stand in judgment and say, God, she has done so many righteous things. Don't count her faults. Forgive her of her trespasses. Because she asked you and you said all we have to do is ask. But we don't even ask for forgiveness. We'll act a fool and go on and say, too bad. We won't even say I'm sorry. We won't admit we're wrong. We just don't do what we need to do as Christians. All of us, not some of us. It means change. It means great change. It means heart change. It means bitterness of the heart sometimes because you got to change. But through God's mercy and prayers and glory, that bitterness will turn sweet before you know it. John had to eat of a bitter note. Things that we don't need to know about until they come. But it went down tasting good. Mm. But once it get in there, it was as bitter as it could be. See, that's just an example of it may seem good while you're doing it. But when the police pull up and everybody go to jail, it wasn't as sweet while you was doing it, was it? Mm. Got a little worse. Don't matter what it is. You could be doing anything. You could be doing nothing. You could just be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Amen. A lot of things happened at the wrong place at the wrong time. And we'd love to say, I was at the wrong place at the wrong You was? Whoa. Why? Because you chose to? We didn't have to be at some of these wrong places at the wrong time. We went because we wanted to go. It ended up wrong because it wasn't as sweet going down. These believers are spiritually pure. These 144,000, spiritually pure. Not just physically pure. They were spiritually because they believed and followed Jesus to the end of the earth. Followed him all the way until they entered into their rest. They followed him. They believed him. They trusted him. 
We have to see it to believe. They say that preacher over there healing people. He is. I'm going over there Sunday so I can see him healing people. You don't need to go over there to be healed. You can stay wherever you are and allow God to make a change in your life and be healed. Be healed. It don't take a mansion to get healed in. It don't take money for you to decide, now I'm a righteous Christian because now I can buy what I want. I how that sound. I'm good now because I can buy anything. You can't buy your way into heaven. The only way you get there is through a righteous way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you can start now. A lot of us that going through what we're going through, the single life, the married life, it don't take you to wait for the other person to say I'm sorry or it don't take you to decide that you want to be righteous and dump that man that ain't or dump that woman that ain't. And I don't mean uh, as a married couple, well, they ain't going to do the right thing until I divorce you. I mean, you're a single couple and you know you're dating a drunk and lying, no alcoholic that's beating you all day, but you won't leave him? Mm. Why? Because you're enjoying, you like it a little bit. We got to change. We got to change. Christ is faithful. And these believers remained faithful to him. They have followed him exclusively. And they have received God's reward for staying committed to him. Don't you want a great reward? It's not about being greedy. This is what he said he had for us. A great reward for those that stay what? Faithful to him. I want my great reward. I want to stay faithful to him. I don't want to do whatever I want and then get my great reward because I ain't earned it. And if I choose that direction, guess what? I ain't getting it. You got to earn that great reward. You got to live a great, great life. And when they speak of the first fruits, it refers to the act of dedicating the first part of the harvest as holy to God. Exodus 23 and 19, and also in James 1 and 18. First fruits. Also, when you are baptized and you come up out that water from your old life being baptized in what? The blood of Jesus. It's not water. It doesn't represent water. It represents the love that you have for him and the commitment that you have made between you and him saying that I will live a new life dedicated to who? To him. Uh, do that happen most of the time? No. No, we live a new life. Real new. I'm a Christian, but I'm still going to do whatever <coughs> I want to. Okay, now. Yeah. Mm. That's a pagan way of living. Mm. That's pagan spirituality is what they call it. And 90% of believers have that pagan spirituality trying to fight for that true Christianity. Mm. We think we're good, but we're not as good as we think we are. Verse 6 and 7. Some believers that this is a final worldwide appeal to people, to all people, to recognize the one true God. Some believers think that this revelation is the last appeal to us, the last begging and pleading for this world to appeal and to all believers to recognize the one true God. There's only one true God. No one will have the exclusive, excuse me, the excuse of never hearing God's truth. Others have somehow see this as an announcement of judgment rather than as an appeal. God is not just telling us that this is going to be judgment time when he gathers us home, when he comes back as a rush of water, his voice as loud as a pearl of thunder. It's not just to scare you. It's to let you recognize who he is mm -hmm. and the power that he has and the love that he shares for us. That's why he's telling us now to recognize who he is. He's the one and only in the true and living God. Amen. Don't look at this as just someone saying, it's just the way you do. It's the right thing. It's the way to go. No, it's more than that. He is the righteous. He is the perpetuation for
for all of our lives. That's why we take that communion that I don't have ready today. But that's why we take it because it's a commitment, eternal commitment that we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Mm -hmm. I believe in Him as the maker of the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. I believe that He is the, and I know He is the only Son of our Lord. It's a commitment. That's the affirmation that we hold. That's the commitment that we adapt in our lives. And we got to start doing it. Mm -hmm. Living a Christian pagan life. We need to be like the 144,000 pure and righteous. God didn't say, well, they were pure and righteous. They didn't sleep with women. Would make you think that these are all men. This 144,000. But not necessarily. As you know how God works it words with things, he mm -hmm. can be uh, a little hard to understand from time to time, but you gotta have common sense that he gave us to decipher. He wants us to be righteous, do right, live right, abide by his commandments in order for our life to be edified and blessed. Mm -hmm. In order for our robe to be dipped in a righteous snow of blood. Amen. That's why he put these commands in order. Mm -hmm. So that you'll have a chance at eternal life. Amen. You don't have to follow none of them. But it's to give you a what? A chance. A chance. Satan don't give that chance. He just say, do it, do it, do it, do it. Not, let me tell you once you follow me, let me tell you what happens at the end. He already know. He know. He was there from the beginning. He knows that because of what he done, he was cast out along with the other fallen angels. He knows that there's no way to make it back in God's kingdom. He knows that at the end when Jesus returned and <laughs> gathered up the 144,000, all those Gentiles that have became righteous with him, that they are going to burn for eternity in a lake of sulfur and brimstone and fire. Along with all those ministers that refuse to teach the truth. That refuse to abide by God's word. That's why I always say, Lord, I, you know, I'm trying to do this. Help me to do that. And I, oh, God, thank you. I don't do this no more. I don't do that. It's a, when you see the blessing and the changes that God has made in your life, thank him for it. Mm -hmm. So he'll know you wanted that change. You appreciate that change. And you accept that change. But don't thank him. Don't accept it. Don't appreciate it. You'll fall back in your what? In your wicked way. Because you didn't see the one and true only God that has changed you from what you were. It's a shame. We need to see it. Verse 6 says, Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God! And give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. His judgment it has come, church. The hour is near where he will rapture this world and cause the storm.